Hi, everyone. Today we are talking about kind of the concept of moving out of the social media space as people who used to be influencers. We're going to be talking about ex vlog squad member Jason Nash and how we're beginning to witness the first large scale wave of influencers fully using fully losing their relevancy and ability to make a living online and having to transition back to so-called regular lives. Before we get into all of that, links, sources, ways to support the channel, including Amazon, Patreon, YouTube memberships, all that kind of stuff, all down below, including links to what's on my face. And I want to thank all of my current members and patrons' names on the screen. There's also an email to suggest content down below. Now, I'm going to be honest right now for a quick second with you all. I, on this past weekend, had something like really bad happen to me i talk about it on twitter i guess a bit i don't really want to get into it too much in the videos or anything but already it's been like a minute and it's been like hard to film so if i'm a little bit off it's, i need to keep it pushing unfortunately it's a reality of the world that we live in i'll talk about that in this video as well i'm not doing it very well right now clearly anyway uh, while we go through this whole conversation we're going to look at jason nash's podcast episode from last week we're going to look at a, a tiktok from tana mojo we're going to look at kind of what's been going on with gabby Hanna and just these this general new trend that i've been seeing of videos on tiktok about this conversation so three parts to the video part one i'm going to define what i've called the influencer cv phenomenon part two jason nash and tiktok live and what that transition has been like for him and part three where is gabby Hanna now Part one, the influencer CV phenomenon. So this is not a thing that anyone has coined up to this point, to my understanding. And I have no idea if only French people call resumes CVs. But I want to discuss this general phenomenon that I've noticed that started kind of coming up through commentary in 2016 to 2018, 2019-ish. When making my ver video that I made on 2016, 2017 YouTube, I had to watch a lot of those Jake Paul and Logan Paul diss tracks. I had to watch the videos reacting to them, people talking about Team 10, which has since dissolved, people talking about a lot of these figures that are not that kind of prominent anymore in the space. One of the things that was really interesting was Jake's Paul, Jake Paul's diss track on like teachers, like on the concept of going to school. What's the answer, Jake Paul? Why don't you tell us some shit that we're actually gonna use in our real lives? Yeah, why don't you teach us something useful? A lot of these commentary channels, especially reacting to this video, were pointing out the need on social media to have that sort of backup plan if these types of things didn't work out. The thing with the internet and the influencer realm is that it hasn't existed a super long time, especially in 2016, and it had only been a viable career for some for only less than five years, realistically. YouTube hadn't even had monetization that long. And now we're about a decade out. And we're starting to see what happens when the pot has completely run dry with some influencers. The example being presented to many in the late 2010s was the peak of profitability in the influencer space. And that was a space that wasn't super oversaturated. Now we're going into this somewhat more realistically, people who are new into the wave because of the awareness of that newer reality. Like I'm somewhat decently popular in the grand scheme of things. I get decent views. I get way more views than D Jason Nash does on YouTube, surprisingly. This to me is not sustainable at this point at all. I used this while I was going through graduate school, but I was also doing another job as well. And I'm still, I still have these two jobs, but it's not sustaining like a solid full-time income. And I'm actively looking for professional work at the same time. I'm just kind of still doing this to this extent because this is what I have right now. A lot of people don't go in with this as their bet anymore, even if they are on the up, which is kind of where I'm at right now. Social media being a viable career option has actually to this point expanded to being viable into how people have integrated into education. People have started now focusing on uh, multimodal literacy, meaning literacy working with multiple forms of media at the same time, how they intersect, what those uh, kind of theories are like and how everything is working up until this point. And it has inspired a more dynamic literacy and design teaching which I think is something that's kind of cool because now they have graphic design as media expression, video production and video editing, coding, that kind of stuff. But I talk about that more in my recent video on teaching Gen Alpha. 2014 to 2019 had influencers admitting to dropping out of high school, putting off college, putting off any general 
vocational training, high risk international moves, signing huge contracts with companies without legal representation or legal knowledge, overspending on designer goods, luxury housing, cars, vacations. And then COVID brought in another new wave of influencers given the unprecedented increase in internet usage due to the lockdowns. Let's talk about me dropping out of high school, why I did it, why I don't regret it, but most importantly, why I would never, ever, ever recommend it. So let me paint the picture. It's 2020 TikTok COVID. Everything I love and enjoy and that got me out of bed in the morning was basically gone. There was no dance, no musical theater. I worked at a shoe store in the local mall, but the, all the malls were closed down. So I was like, shit, what do I do with my time? TikTok. So I just started posting a bunch and my following grew from about 50K to I finished that year at 16 years old with over 8 million followers, which was insane. Now I'm doing TikTok full time. I'm making more money than I ever thought I would see in my life. So obviously I was like, oh dang, let's just switch to online school. I was already forced into online school. But then I discovered later that year, online school didn't really work for me. I'm a person who needs to be in a classroom and have like physical learning. I'm not good at teaching myself these lessons, but going back to my high school wasn't exactly an option because I'd already heard about, I mean, kids had already been bullying me and making fun of me, which just wasn't ideal. But then on top of that, I heard about teachers having big group discussions in classes about me. So I was like, fuck no, I'm not going back to that. So my parents didn't let me drop out of high school. I was doing the bare minimum of work online to stay enrolled for like a year until it all caught up to me and I had not done my work, so I got kicked out. So by the time they kind of found this out, I was already acting as an adult. I had been acting as an adult way before then, but making my own decisions, fully supporting myself. So they were like, you can make this adult decision for yourself. Obviously, we're not happy about it, but they were like, it's your life. Right around this time, I also realized, wow, I have an opportunity to not only like financially be able to support myself to move to another country and live out dreams that I never thought would be possible, but also with a visa. Like I have an opportunity here to be able to get a visa and go live in another country, which is a blessing. And just I'm so insanely grateful for it because a lot of people do not have that opportunity. I also did all this while knowing the consequences of my actions for dropping out, which was that I was going to struggle if I wanted to go to a college or university, I would have to go back and get my full high school diploma, which you can do in my home province, not a GED. And that also I always, I never really had a desire to go to a university or college and my dream school didn't require a high school diploma. So there was nothing really holding me back because I just did not want to lose this opportunity because I didn't know if in a year it was still going to be waiting for me. I wanted to take every single second I could. Now I'm 19 going on 20 and I just have a big life philosophy of not regretting decisions that I can't change and I can't go back in the past and reverse it. So I understand the consequences of my actions. But with all of that said, here is why I would never, ever, ever do this. I made a list. First of all, do not limit your options for higher education. That's the obvious, you know, you never know what decisions you're going to make in the future. Even if you think that you don't want it right now, you never know how that's going to change. The actual skills that I wish that I stayed in high school and learned, oh, like time management, scheduling, just so many different things that make you a functioning member of society. I've started to get better at it now, but I feel like I would be so much more set up for success and I wouldn't have to struggle so hard to get it now if I just stayed in school and stuck with the program because I hate to say it, like it or not, but there's a way that society functions and school does set you up as a functional member of that. No matter how you personally feel about how your friends, how your family, people will look down on you for not finishing high school. My comment section is probably going to be living proof of this. Okay, now this actually might be my one big regret about the whole thing because I can't go back and change this. I wish I did not become an adult so early, even though it wasn't really fully by choice, it was kind of already there. But at the same time, I wish I had stayed and just fully enjoyed that high school experience because that's something that I'm never going to get back. I'm never going to have that opportunity again. I can't just, you know, and it's something that I do miss and just question what that would have been like. Okay, and finally, to like wrap this all up, um, there's a lot of people on my last video saying that dropping out of high school would like never make sense to them, which if I could say one thing, it's maybe be grateful that you've never had to consider or even take that second. Because some people, you know, there's a variety of reasons as to why people drop out and you'll never be able to fully put yourself into their shoes, but you never know what's going on in someone's life. So if you have the opportunity to do it, just finish it, do it. Don't be a little bit stupid like me. I mean, I have my reasons, I don't regret it, but please finish high school do not take this as a guide to not because it will help you out in life. but now the things have kind of emerged back into people having to work in the office people having to go to school full-time etc this decrease has come back down and a lot of these covid era influencers as well are finding themselves not having the relevance or popular popularity that they once had now many tiktok influencers are posting videos about how they're how they're handling going back to regular life some having to do so because of controversy some having to do so because they just lost relevancy they were a one trick pony and that they need to go back to this backup plan before it's too late. Even, I don't know if this is even real, but like awesome McBrooms, like either pretending to or attempting to go back to university. And you can see that there are some that are in here that have been active in controversy and are now kind of facing those repercussions. I'm going to put in some of these TikToks I've seen from like these so-called flop influencers now just to give you an idea about what's happening. I failed influencing and I'm going to have to look for a second job. I just got out of therapy with my therapist and basically we were talking about financial struggles and how I just have a million things coming up on my plate. 
I have to do my taxes because I owe this year um, because it's my first time being a freelancer for a full year and I am turning 26 in a couple days so I'm gonna be off my dad's insurance and I have to pay that all by myself out of pocket um, what else oh student loans are kicking back in and I haven't paid a cent of those yet so I'll have to do that and um, I'm planning on moving at the end of our lease will which will be in like October Currently, I'm using my boyfriend's car, um, and if we move to different states, then I am going to need my own car, and that comes along with car insurance. So, it's just a lot. It's a lot. And right now, I am a full-time influencer, for those that don't know, and I make equivalent to minimum wage doing that because I don't have the biggest following, but I decided to quit um, my 9 to 5 in May of 2020 when the pandemic was going down because I was just fucking miserable at my job, and... I wanted to take a chance on myself and just figure out influencing and if I would be good at it and I really liked it. I ended up falling in love with it and I thought I was good at it but recently things have been really slow and brands just haven't been wanting to work with me and the brands that do reach out don't want to pay me. They just want to give me free things which is really cool and I'm really appreciative of that but that doesn't pay my bills. I cannot pay my rent with a t-shirt. Influencers in 2020 they like moved to LA and they like quit their old jobs and now they're like nothing. Flop influencer here. Okay, I can't talk about other people, but I can yap about myself, so I will. I dropped out of high school, and then I moved to LA when I was 17 alone. I'm now about to turn 20 in March. Holy crap. Time flies. But... I don't know. I don't really see it as a flop because I moved out here. I took a new opportunity. I also knew when I moved that this wasn't what I was going to do for the rest of my life, whether that was if I wanted to move into a different form of entertainment or I found out for me entirely. It's just not for me. I don't really like or enjoy the limelight at all. Um, I, it doesn't fill up my cup of tea. It doesn't get me excited to get out of bed in the morning. So I'm moving back to Canada and I'm starting school again, which I'm really, really excited about. And, you know, I just don't see it as a flop for myself. I see it as I got to have a different opportunity, a different experience, and now it's just time to move on to a new chapter. So, yeah. This is my story of why I decided to quit being a full-time influencer after a year and get a job in corporate America. And I wanted to share this because I feel like being an influencer is such a, I don't know, kind of like coveted job right now, where at least people are really interested in what it actually means to be a full-time influencer. And I don't know, I just want to give you guys kind of like a look behind the curtain. So I've been in the social media game since 2016, um, really just fell into it very serendipitously. Honestly loved it. I did it all throughout college. And then I decided to go full-time after about a year or so um, post-grad. It was during COVID. I was like, may as well try and do this thing. And after a year, I was like, you know what? I just don't think that this is for me. So reason number one why I decided to not be a full-time influencer anymore is honestly money. This came down to stability and my long-term goals. And I felt like I could just reach those financial goals quicker if I wasn't an influencer, essentially freelance. And I just had a very stable and traditional job. I honestly think that in order to be a full-time influencer or just working freelance in general, you have to be very savvy with your money. Like you have to be financially responsible because your income will ebb and flow so much. I had months where I made more than I ever thought was even imaginable from sponsorships and then I would have months at like the start of the year or just you know like during those dead times where I would honestly have like maybe one sponsorship and I didn't really have any money coming in so I'd have to be really smart with my finances and just like budget everything to a T. I also may have jumped into being a full-time influencer sooner than I wanted to and I had to bust my ass to honestly make as much money as I wanted to every month. I was taking on I'm not even joking like 12 sponsorships a month just to make ends meet and that was just not the vibe for me so yes you can do it if you think that you're making enough per sponsorship but really ask yourself like how many sponsorships do i need to take every single month am i willing to do that and what happens if i don't get that many sponsorships and i did have multiple streams of income i was doing instagram tiktok youtube i had google adsense from youtube i had my like to know it and my affiliate links were starting to do really well so even though i had multiple streams of income sponsorships were without a doubt like 80 percent of my income so if i wasn't getting brand sponsorships things were they were rough. <laughs> On the same note of money, I am 25 years old and I cannot tell you the first thing about health insurance, retirement, anything like that, but I knew that I needed those things and I did not have them as a freelancer. Luckily, I am still on my parents' health insurance. God bless that. And I don't know, unless you have a significant other who has a more traditional job and could provide health insurance, a 401k, all of that kind of stuff, I don't know how you're going to figure it out. I'm sure there are ways to do that. But yeah, I just wanted to have a job that could provide all of that for me, you know, with benefits at a discounted rate, with retirement matching and all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, as a freelancer, I really don't know how you get that. Okay, this one's going to sound like a first world problem, but we need to unpack it. Being an influencer is... I don't know, it can be such a materialistic and shallow job at times. And this is coming from someone in like the fashion and beauty space. Like my job completely relied on me keeping up with trends, 
constantly buying new products and trying things out and sharing them with people and saying, hey, this is the next best thing. This is why you need it, blah, 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 getting PR all the time. And it sounds amazing. Like it sounds so great to be paid by your favorite brands. And it is. I'm so honored. It feels amazing to be getting free products all the time. But it just hit me at one point that I was so incredibly fatigued by capitalism, I guess. And as I get older, I really just wanted to take a step back and think about what is truly important to me and what I want my platform to be, why I'm sharing the things I'm sharing. And I don't want to feel like I need to post to make money and that I need to buy things to make money and I need to buy things to stay relevant, all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just took a step back from it all and I feel so much better for it now. Like my closet is actually a closet that I love, that I spend money on, that I curate, and it's not based on trying to keep up with the Joneses or trying to grow my following. And the last thing that I'll share, this is something that I discovered about myself towards the end of my time being an influencer and it's that I genuinely missed being a part of a team and I felt like after my time as an influencer I was just so ready to go into marketing which is what I was interested in and take everything that I learned as an influencer and apply that to a team a cause something that's bigger than myself and I feel so lucky that I found a corporate job where I love my team I love the company and I feel like I'm genuinely contributing to something bigger than myself and I don't know there's just something really like gratifying and fulfilling about that and that was something that I didn't have when I was working by myself. I also feel like, you know what, I'm young. I still have so much to learn about marketing. I do know a lot. I do know a lot about marketing, but there's still so much to learn and I feel challenged more than ever in my corporate job. Um, I've said this so many times, but I feel like I learned more in my one month in corporate America than an entire year working for myself. And so, yeah, I've honestly just had the best experience. Well, maybe not the best experience. You still have bad days, but I've had a really great experience in corporate America. Don't regret it at all. I still am an influencer, do social media part time, and I kind of get the best of both worlds now. There's even an influencer who has started a course, which is very influencer of them, for those who want to move on from influencing and back into the regular maybe corporate world, back into education, back into whatever they want to do in life. This was written about in a New York Times article, but it's behind a paywall. You can't even attempt to preview it without them berating you to sign up. So I'll put in a TikTok of someone talking about it. So I feel like most people on this app are in the world of trying to get into the influencing space and trying to monetize their following and quit their nine to five job. But I came across this article, which is literally the opposite. It's from internet personality, Lee from America, Lee Tilgman, not sure how to say her last name, um, but she was an influencer and she quit influencing to pursue just a nine to five job. And she now is hosting workshops to help other influencers quit influencing. Let's unpack this. So in the late 2010s, Lee was an influencer. She was making $300,000 a year just with partnerships, with Outdoor Voices, to all these other brands. So basically at the peak of her career, she's making six figures. She decides to quit influencing and get a office job. You just never hear about this. You always hear about people wanting to be an influencer, making money or monetizing, especially here on TikTok or in articles and things like this. So actually reading an article about someone who's trying to get out of the influencer industry and get an office job and navigating that is just kind of unique. Especially since recent studies are showing that 54% of Gen Z and millennial Americans would be interested in becoming an influencer and 86% of those would be willing to post sponsored content for money. The article goes on to say that obviously chasing this dream kind of comes with its own costs. And if you like look at YouTube, you can see how many people are doing these like tearful YouTube videos about how they're quitting the industry um, and the toll that it's, it's taken on them. So basically Lee created these workshops to support influencers and in leaving their career as influencers. What are our thoughts on this? Another example of this kind of concept of like the influencer falling off and needing to come back and trying to handle like this like shift in life and the kind of innate selfishness that led to this career, but now they're kind of stuck in this place was the Boogie documentary that had come out. And he talks about how bad things have gone for him, what his debt's like, how he makes no money. He's not making enough money on social media. And this clip that kind of turned into a joke because of how almost satirical it had been seemed where he talks about who I assume is with like a career advisor or something his long gap in his resume and his like work experience and I'll put that in as well tell me a little bit about your current self-employment like what is your most current experience what do you do so I've been making online video for about 17 years um, I was one of the like original youtubers to really kind of blow up mm -hmm. and my entire shtick has been about like pretend pretending to get angry about video games I do a character voice like this, you, you sons of bitches, I can't believe you ruined Diablo 3, this is my favorite game, you know. And the kids liked it. And uh, then I got married. 
Uh, then I got a divorce five years later. And I kind of completely and utterly lost my mind. I also got bariatric surgery, so I lost my major coping mechanism, which is food. And uh, now I kind of need to transition into, honestly, anything, because I'll likely lose my house in the next six months if I don't find gainful employment. Are you currently doing any YouTube stuff? Is that still yes, something you're doing still, and you're going to continue mostly commentary. to do it? Yeah, I mostly do commentary videos now. I am disabled, uh, recognized by the state of Arkansas, but also the United States government. There's that. Now, the, the downside of that is I am extremely depressed. So there's some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, uh, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I'm also a pedophile, uh, but that could be an issue uh, for employers that would research me. So if we can find someone who won't Google me, that would be good. Well, uh, that's difficult. Right. I mean, I can't, I can't submit your resume to a client and then request that they don't Google. And overall too, it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon because even those who are able and have had comp like, like good qualifications prior to turning to influencing sometimes have such a long gap in their resume that it's not even plausible really to go back to the workforce. I remember James Charles used to talk about how he had really, really, really good grades in high school and he was in a lot of clubs and he was very involved. That's cool and everything. And let's even pretend allegations aside if he he's now 24, if he tried to go back to university, he would have to apply as a mature student and then he would need to describe and write and get letters from other people saying that he needs to go back. Like those acclimates, so-called whatever, that he got in that high school space no longer are relevant. And then if you have a lot of these big things fail for you in the influencer space, it doesn't necessarily look good for you either. And the internet has so many niches and so many influencers who don't have relevance to their name that mainstream media longevity does have for notoriety and your notoriety fades quickly if that niche is not being filled and that is why we're starting to get this now because so many big communities have fallen to the wayside kind of now for i would say more gaming related content related content in the streaming space as well as what are other things put down below what you think is honestly, like the most popular in the YouTube space right now. I think a lot of really long form, almost film edited video essays are really big. I would also say that a lot of really, really lighthearted commentary on sort of superficial things like old TV shows uh, is really, really popular. I would say that there are other genres like that that are people don't really feel the seriousness anymore they don't really want the seriousness they don't want things to constantly be so serious because even something as silly seeming as the beauty community now is just flat it's just full of allegations of sa of coercion manipulation of scamming of all that kind of stuff and people are just grown to be really tired of it but with this i want to move into part two where we talk specifically about jason nash kind of falling off and moving on to like tiktok live so part two jason nash tiktok live so many have started to come across jason nash on their tiktok feed on a daily basis and not regular videos either, just TikTok live battles. It is currently, you'll, I guess this will teach you how quickly I edit my videos if this is out in the same day, but it is currently 2.44 p.m. on February 1st. I'm going to go on my phone and the most recent person I looked up on TikTok is Jason Nash because of yesterday. This is what we're working with. I don't know what any of this, I think the funniest part about this is I have genuinely no idea what any of this means. So now let's take a look back on the whole timeline and how we got here and we can kind of sit and reflect on where we are now in this weird time in the internet with high economic struggles but seemingly low retention, instability of the job, people trying to move back into regular careers, the fantasy sort of falling to the wayside. Jason Nash is a former member from a group called the Vlog Squad, which was spearheaded by David Dobrik, who grew his relevance on Vine and a lot of the other Vlog Squad members did as well. The, the Vlog Squad had many big social media figures and had vlogs posted daily or almost daily, depending on the phase, I guess, uh, that were usually boiled down to around four minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> so funny, funny number. The Vlog Squad at some point or another, this is not all at the same time, included Gabby Hanna, Liza 
Masakoshi, Jeff Wittick, Trisha Paytas, Tana Mojo was in a bunch of the videos. They had Josh Peck in a bunch of the videos. Uh, there was Madison Beer as well in a lot of them. And I'm sure there were many other notable people who have relevance. But I don't know how many times I have to say this because people keep forgetting. I didn't have internet at all until 2017. And when I say until 2017, I mean like September of 2017. So almost 2018. So I and other than that, like. I have active, I've had active social media since like 2013, but didn't use them very often, obviously, because I wasn't online. So there are people that I kind of know of, but that I kind of don't. And there are people that I can somewhat recognize, but I don't really know what they did. Uh, my recent thing is trying to figure out like what those 2014 Get Ready With Me videos were like. <laughs> because I just keep hearing about them and I don't quite understand them, but that's besides the point. So David Dobrik, however, famously did not pay his co-stars on the Vlog Squad, despite his multi-million dollar net worth, and instead decided that relevance and social media clout was enough compensation. So just being around him was enough payment. Obviously, he gifted them stuff and he did some other things, but at the end of the day, they were not salaried in any capacity. Then came Trisha Paytas, who I did mention earlier as being in the vlogs, who dated Jason Nash from 2017 to 2019. Trisha Paytas, upon dating Jason Nash, appeared in many Vlog Squad videos. Now, Trisha Paytas, I understand, is incredibly controversial and has done many, many wrong things. Do not get me wrong. However, you can see in the vlogs, there are many instances in which Trisha was in a very bad state of mind and she has discussed her issues with mental health and addiction uh, in many different spaces. But David clearly antagonizes her and others in her space in weird positions during the vlogs. And this is something that people were picking up on further and further towards the end of the vlogs of the uh, vlog squad, if you will. Trisha, don't leave. He loves you. Trisha, you're the only woman for me. And I would be lost without you. Imagine right now she just gets rammed by a car. <laughs> <laughs> Jason goes, yes. <laughs> All right, guys, Jason thought of a fun idea. I just pulled over in the middle of the street. Okay. I don't like doing this. I give Trisha a two minute hall pass at a bar. <laughs> she has two minutes to do whatever she wants. Are you down? Am I sucking dick or what? No! <laughs> what the fuck kind of thing question is that? No, you're uh, sucking dick. If she can blow someone in two minutes, that's fine. No. Okay, no. fine. I get two minutes too. No. You, no. Trisha, let him. <laughs> let him, Trisha. To make it fair, Jason should get two hours. <laughs> then the faithful day comes. September well, my 15th, friends, here 2020, we are. They said the beginning it would never of happen. the Frenemies Me podcast and with a Ethan Klein and, uh, and Trisha Paytas. This unknowingly the inception of a very iconic internet phenomenon that also inevitably led to the downfall of the vlog squad. To summarize things extremely quickly, there are more video essays on Frenemies, I feel like, than episodes of Frenemies that you can look at if you want the whole scoop. But Trisha would talk about her time in the vlog squad, stating that many videos were inciting problematic actions between her and others or between just others in general. For example, uh, there was Seth and the mask in which he thought it was his girlfriend kissing him, but it was Jason Nash. Uh, a lot of other things like that. There was two girls that were um, in a case of SA involving Dirty Dom as well. I am keeping these things very light because there are lots of other videos on it and I don't want this to make me demonetize when I'm just kind of trying to touch on it. Big Nick and Seth came out with allegations. Now all of a sudden there's detractors from the vlog squad along with just Trisha Paytas, but Trisha Paytas was also getting a lot of notoriety and I guess more relevance and people were believing her more because of Ethan Klein. And then now you have Jeff Wittick's accident that also occurred around this time in about in early 2021 or 2020. Point is, so now Jeff Wittick had the accident, but this wasn't really public yet. And Trisha Paytas was kind of mentioning it and being aware of it. And then this stirred into the, inter the famous interview with Jeff, which was nuts and the okay ethan line that came from that if there was a paywall on it and you wanted to get those clicks through doing it this way Dude, they had lawyers the law money. david's lawyers were threatening them non-stop they have i don't know i, I don't know this stuff well you, you act like I'm, I'm with david every day well I it's have, in the I, article uh, if you would have fucking read the article <laughs> okay ethan anyway so then all of a sudden you're having all these and then jeff wittick actually ends up leaving david dobrik's side and the vlog squad's kind of falling apart and they just stop uploading they now haven't uploaded to my understanding in like over a year from now the last video uploaded on the vlog squad channel was march 29th of 2022 so almost two years ago this all spiraled 
so much that people were coming for the vlog squad nonstop. Suddenly they had detractors, as I had mentioned. And then David Dobrik even made this really weak apology on the podcast channel and on the David Dobrik channel, which contained the vlog squad videos. After the apology, David clearly lost the will to upload. The frequency was dropping off and then ended up just dropping off entirely on March 29th, as I mentioned. Thankfully, Snapchat has now entered the chat and has recently kind of done this like story thing where there's a section with influencers and you can see all of these different stories on here of all random people and stuff. And they're chock, chock, chocked full of ads. I have Austin McBroom's brother, Landon. Anyways, so in these stories, you have all of these different clips. People are paid to post every day as many times as they want. This is that Livy Dunn girl, right? But there's a ton of ads that come up. This one's where well, there's another ad. This one's surprisingly not bad. But in this, as I'm as I mentioning how many ads there are, and I think hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft, Snapchat also gets exclusivity. People that are posting on the Snapchat stories are getting paid so, so, so much money. David Dobrik left all the ex-Vlog Squad members in the dust and is doing Snapchats. What's David doing right now? Every Snapchat has a Celsius in it. Undisclosed, literal undisclosed Celsius ads. He's holding a Celsius. It's like they keep placing them in different places. There's a Celsius on the counter phones leaning on a celsius i think it's just like the amount of product placement is nuts also there's christmas trees in the background i feel like these are old clearly there's money to be made there and david dobrik at one point i think it was either on snapchat or something i don't remember where i saw this video but he visited jason nash and kind of like made fun of the fact that he has to do ticked off live for money because he can't afford to live anymore on like youtube and stuff like that because of the vlog squad ending of all these people left in the dust this leaves Jason Nash, despite Jason Nash standing with David throughout all the controversy. Now, Jason Live has been on TikTok Live every day and has been essentially e-begging for TikTok rewards. Tana Mojo even made the following TikTok on it, which I'll play right now. Can someone make Jason Nash a fucking DoorDash account? If I open my TikTok one more time to seeing him begging for roses on my Live For You page, I'm calling CPS. Have you seen your kids? <laughs> Have you seen them? And also when they go to school, are their friends like, hey, I saw your dad, like, begging for a galaxy like and i'm i know i'm a sellout okay i'm not against people doing things for money but at this point it's like i would rather see him behind a paywall cheeked up like i just i just don't i just every single time i've opened my phone jason nash is on live begging for money and i want answers have you seen your kids this month and jason responded to this in a surprisingly insightful conversation this conversation is towards the end of the podcast the rest of it's kind of on a podcast episode titled jason defense tiktok live Zach Justice on Dropout and Zane's Body Reveal dash AGT, where this is where they discuss all of this. Jason states that he'll do anything for his kids, and this is what he has come to, and TikTok had approached him on making these lives. And then they go into a conversation about like if they were to move into regular jobs, what they think they would do, and I'm going to put that clip in now. And it does. It just makes you stronger. Now, look, would I be on TikTok Live if I wasn't in like a financial hole? Mm. I don't know. Probably not. But also, like, YouTube wasn't really working. And um, and I needed to find something. OnlyFans. I can't do OnlyFans. They, they won't let me on there. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. I've tried multiple I've tried. times. They, they said no. No, I, I, can't. I don't want to do OnlyFans. Yeah. And and so it was like, all right. And TikTok came to me. They're like, we'll we'll help you. And I was like, oh, that's good. I was like, okay. And so yeah. And and it's just like, it is what it is. Do you, you, know? do you have um? I, I obviously your kids are first and foremost. But do you also have a north star for yourself? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to make this TV show, and I had a good meeting the other day, and it's like, I do TikTok Live, and then that will help the podcast. The podcast is only in its second year, yeah. so I'm like, I'm hoping maybe by the third year it becomes like profitable. Maybe this year it'll become profitable. And so like TikTok Live is affording this, and then that's that's my North Star. Mm -hmm. um, but but right now I, I pay for my kid's school, which is really expensive, and I pay for this house, and I pay for, and then I have college next year. Yeah. So I'm just like... This is what it is. And then what I try to think about are all the people that love the live when I come on and they're like, what's up, what's up, what's up? I'm like, yeah. and I know every name and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. So you're getting repeat. Yeah, like yeah. there's like a community now. It's, it's for lack of, you're gonna hate this, Nash Nation. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I hate that? I love it. Because it's kind of, it's, it's oh, Zach's done. Zach's but, done. But, but, but I'm like, what's up, Nash Nation? And then every day when you go on, it builds, it builds. I have a Discord now. And listen, it is what it is. It's like, yeah. I was on Vine, I was on YouTube, I was on Snapchat, and now I'm doing this. <laughs> Say that is okay. You know what? Just label it that like that. Why don't you get a real job? Uh, 
I don't have any skills. <laughs> okay. See people? <laughs> I don't. See, that's why. Someone someone said that the other day. Why don't you get into real estate? I'm like, I hate it. I don't have a real Bo, estate license. Bo Graney? Do you have any interests um, outside of entertainment? Um, no. Okay. I mean, I, I don't. golfer? I can't golf. Okay. <laughs> what, would I, what would I do? <laughs> I was about to say live stream it, but no, never mind. I, mean, that, I hope you know that didn't come off as like a negative thing. I no, was no, no. I, I like what you're doing. You're you're posing the question of what everyone's thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is good. <laughs> <laughs> what a piece. Of- you're saying <laughs> what is on everybody's mind. I'm just. Yeah. Well, I saw I saw a comment like, oh, I'm gonna ask him because people are you know I don't know. I just see it straight as straight talking Zach, you know. Yeah. 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 Straight yeah. shooter, this guy over here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I don't I just don't look at it that way. I just look at it like it's I'm on there for eight hours a day, and I'm entertaining people. People want to come in talking. Yeah. I and, mean, this is your job. This is what you do. Yeah, what yeah, you've been doing. That's how I see it. And yeah. that's it. And if anybody doesn't like it, it's like, well, don't. They're probably, like, the people that are saying that probably have conventional jobs, right? They're looking at it like, ugh. Yes. Like, ugh. They can't, they can't do what he does. So they're like, why? So they're trying to bring him down, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I challenge anybody to sit there for, for eight hours. It's, it's exhausting. Let's start one. Let's sit here for eight. <laughs> Pull up the phone. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. Um, Excuse please. Uh, no, I'm, no, I, no, I get it. Because I, I, I have, I am with child as well. Not with, but I have a child. <laughs> yes. So, so I get it. I mean, right. I, I do, it's like you do anything. There's you like, do anything for exactly. your kids. But anyway, all right, let's get off TikTok. How many, <laughs> how many hours do we have? How many minutes do we have? Oh, we have a game. They also discuss kind of influencer fame and how it's really wild to assume that you will have relevance forever because there's always people who are more creative than you. There are always going to be people who have better production value than you. There's always going to be something. You can't have the best at something usually on social media. And the other thing is too, is a lot of these people, even David, Jason, and they do talk about this in the podcast as well, had this relevancy when the market was far less oversaturated. One of the guys in the podcast, I don't know if you're able to find this for a clip or anything, but he actually says like back when I was doing this, like when I blew up on Vine, there was like a hundred of us total that were big social media figures. Now you've got tens of thousands, new people popping up every single day, new people getting tons of followers every single day, these new trends, these people who come in and out in a month, people come in and out in a couple of years that you just can't, you have to see this as fleeting from the moment that it becomes viable for you. Overall, with this interesting perspective in mind, I want to move into my final part as part three. Part three, where is Gabby Hanna now? I was actually going to make a whole video on this, but I feel like this fits better into this sort of conversation. This is the first example ever, I feel like, of what I deem to be the good ending on revolving around somebody on social media. I'm going to quickly summarize what happened with Gabby Hanna over the past couple of years, very, very briefly, and I'm leaving out a lot of details. I've made videos on this. This her commenting on Gabby Hanna's kind of rant tirade type thing she was on in 2021 is actually why I got subscribers really in the first place. Hi. So today I'm going to talk about how much Gabby Hanna drives me off the wall a little bit and I'll explain why. So let's start with a quick house of a little housekeeping things really quick. Just an FYI, everything's alleged. Please don't sue me. Thanks. Um, I, I know I don't make videos that often. Um, I made one other video like this on Jeffree Star, a sort of video essay kind of thing, because I like using my degree and what I learn to form videos like this. So I have lots of videos on it. Other people have lots of videos on it and they can do what they please. If you want to go back, if you don't want to, I understand. Anyway. This is what it is, super, super TLDR. 2021 to 2023 were very, very turbulent years in the life of Gabby Hanna, and most of the internet turned against her because Gabby started having very prominent public meltdowns in 2021 and ended up harassing a lot of people who were critical of her, a big a big one being Rachel Oates, and then made a series of on people that she fell out with with dedicated episodes for people like Alex James, for people like Jesse Smiles. Uh, a lot of situations she talked about rice gum breaking her phone. She had a lot of very specific dedicated episodes. And she handled topics on that series like SA super, super horribly and would also claim people who made commentary on some of the videos. Then after a hiatus, came back on TikTok throughout 2022 and 2023, making multiple uploads a day, essentially spending her whole day on TikTok, doing TikTok live, and was also smoking a lot of cannabis at the same time, like kind of constantly. She also got many tattoos and would go on these really long rants. She got a moth tattoo here. She got a bunch of very large tattoos, body modifications, and things of the sort. And then she removed all of them also pretty quickly after. 
in a very clearly a very fragile state at points where she wasn't necessarily making the most sense and a lot of people were speculating what's been going on with her a lot of people try to figure out what the issue was i'm not really into doing that she didn't really come out and say she would just say she had adhd all the time uh there's not really a lot of things that were concrete in that in a very fragile state this guy shows up to her house lies to her so that she lets him in is like filming in her house or whatever and then he and then gabby hannah's live i believe on tiktok or something and then people are telling her that like the guy lied and then she kicks him out of her house but this was like super dangerous the guy wanted clout he was making videos he was trying to be this like big you know figure and everyone just thought he was gross rightfully so after all of this gabby hannah seems to drop off the face of the earth a lot of people are really worried then she comes up in a video for a ymca fitness class from her hometown in Pennsylvania. A name I have not heard in a very long time is Gabby Hanna. And very recently it came up on Twitter that she is now a fitness instructor at the Lawrence County YMCA. At first I wasn't sure if this was real, but then I looked up the YMCA's Instagram account and their most recent reel is Gabby introducing herself as the newest instructor, talking about the upcoming class that she's going to be coaching. She has pretty much taken a full year off the internet. She hasn't been on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, literally anything since February of 2023. And I really think that that was the best route for her after everything happened towards the end of 2022. I will say, I think she said this before online, that if she was never going to be an influencer, she wanted to be a fitness instructor, specifically Zumba, I think. And I'm honestly just glad that she's doing okay because towards the end of that entire saga with that person in her house, like it just seemed like it things were not very good. So I'm glad that she's kind of reset her life. She's doing something different and she's enjoying herself. She, I would assume that she created this reel. She's still creating content probably for this YMCA, but that is where she's been. She is a new coach there, so this is fairly recent. Um, I, I'm just glad that she's doing well, and it seems like she's on a positive path right now. A lot of people were pretty happy about it because apparently Gabby Hanna had stated at some point that if social media didn't work out for her, what she would want to do is be like a fitness instructor at like a YMCA or something. And she was there making social media content for them. So she was using her expertise in her old job and seems to be a lot more at peace with herself. And I think something that a lot of people are going to be dissatisfied with is, oh, well, she didn't come back to the internet and apologize for everything. She didn't come back to the internet and do whatever. And people have a lot of like set expectations for people. I think the thing with Gabby Hanna is, is for one, it's debatable at what things were said at what mind frame and state of mind so even if she does go out and apologize about things there'll probably be a lot of people being like well she was just forced to she didn't even know what she was saying yada 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 there are people who disagree with the fact that her state of mind was altered at all there is a lot of things that i don't even know if she'll be able to take back and i feel like if she just came on and tried to do this big apology thing people would be commenting that she's just trying to save her career she's just doing this for money this is disingenuous i think she had gone she was too far gone and not popular enough to be as far gone as she was, I find. And I think with all of that combined, I think there was just no way for her to win. And I think just stepping back and doing something that can kind of lift up her own passion was really the best thing for her. And that's something that I consider too a lot, where it's like, if this were to end for me tomorrow, what am I doing? It's like, well, I'll lean into my other job and I'll, you know, keep applying for, for more jobs and kind of just let this go, you know, not fight for it to my end of my life. It's something that you need to understand is fleeting. With Gabby, she recognized that and seems to be fitting into a life more suited for her. And maybe that even after all of it, all of this, and even to the level which Gabby Hanna was in, there's hope at the end, which I feel like is a nice kind of thing to lean into when you're thinking about stuff like this. Now let's conclude the video. I used to summarize my, do like these like nice little summaries in my conclusions. I noticed when I was rewatching a video for something else I was doing, and I think I'll bring that back. So to summarize, we talked about how influencers in the early 2010s were vouching for ditching school, for doing this full time. This is the best decision they ever made. And now we see a lot of these influencers falling out of the graces of the public and seemingly needing to go back into regular work while not really being able to because of the influencer CV or the influencer resume. And then we see an example of this through Jason Nash and how people are kind of laughing that he's pathetic on TikTok Live. And 
we see Gabby Hanna, who gave up social media altogether to move on into a sort of regular life, just being a fitness instructor and living in Pennsylvania instead of a big time influencer in a huge house in L.A., which is what she was doing before. And I think that if we kind of reflect on all this together, it's just an interesting aspect of reality to look at and something that maybe we'll see flesh out more, I find, over time. But I would like to know your thoughts. Links, source, ways to support the channel, all that kind of stuff down below, including an email to suggest content, links to everything, yada, yada, whatever. I just hope that this was an interesting video for you all and you have an amazing day and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. What would you say this thing is? It literally, it, it doesn't even register a sound at a certain point. It's just rumbling. The little guy up front, you think he can hear anything anymore? Uh, jing tinglers, we got flu flubers. Not a violin, not a piano. I love classical music. That's the right. thing. People don't, th people think that, oh, it's the Grinch. He hates music. No, I just don't like noise. When you say, hey, maybe you guys don't need to be so loud. They say, go fuck yourself. Really? They tell me, go fuck yourself, Grinch. Get back up there on that mountain where you belong, you piece of shit dirt man.